What's up, y'all? Hope everybody's well. Uh, welcome to the Black Masculinist News for the day. Um, I'm not going to spend a long time on this one. This one is actually a question more so than uh, a report. Um, so let me let me go ahead and get to it. As I'm sure you've seen in the title, this was inspired by an interview done on Vlad TV uh, with a comedian um, that you guys are well familiar with, I'm sure. If you've been watching YouTube at all, Ryan Davis. And this isn't so much about the interview. It's not even really about Ryan, but but you know, in in being a comedian, sometimes people say things that really. Uh, you know, kind of break from convention. And in this particular statement, I've seen this. I saw it when it came out. But a colleague of mine, or I should say an associate of mine on Facebook, I didn't get permission to give his name, so I won't. Um, but he made an interesting statement when he sent me this video. Um, he talked about homosexuality as sex work. And that really hit me because I had never considered it as such. Why? Well, much like anything else we've seen in regard to sexuality, much of it is shaped by uh, feminist discourse, right? Feminism is the framework, is the context for how we even approach gender. So, you know, there are many aspects of what males experience that don't get processed in the context of gender because we're not familiar with it. We don't identify it. We don't readily think of men and boys in regard to gender. As a matter of fact, in, in, in many ways, the way even the, the academy's curriculum tends to be set up from campus to campus, you would almost think males have no gender, right? have no sexuality to speak of. The only sexuality you can speak of is, is if it's LGBT, but somehow heterosexual males don't register in regard to gender or sexuality, right? If anything, they're used as the backdrop for criticism, but not necessarily studied in a manner that you know, it it investigates their gender and sexual experience as relevant for study. I think for the most part, we just assume we know it all. We assume there's nothing else to be talked about, nothing else to be learned. That's the end of the discussion. But when the question of whether or not hobo sexuality is a form of sex work came up, I couldn't help but reflect on it. Now, in case you don't know, hobo sexuality is exactly as you see uh, titled. Uh, He says, Ryan Davis says, I was a homosexual. I had sex to avoid being homeless. Now, often it's joked about, especially on YouTube. It's mainly, you know, the way it's articulated, it's mainly black men who, you know, who basically live off a woman, play video games all day, you know, don't generally work, exploit her in terms of her money, uh, eat off her until he is put out of her house. And, you know, often you'll even hear jokes about men who uh, who primarily primarily live out of plastic trash bags, meaning when they get kicked out, they throw all their stuff in a plastic trash bag and then find their way into another woman's house. So even the narrative of it is is exploitive in regard to how these men are thought about. But nobody actually thinks about whether or not homelessness in and of itself or the attempt to avoid it actually is a problem for the males themselves. So when you talk about homelessness, first of all, we found out before um, the pandemic started that uh, black America constituted half of the United States homeless. What many of us didn't want to do is get into the gender aspect of it because that's politically incorrect. But at the end of the day, when you factor in incarceration, a good portion of the homeless are black men, many of whom are formerly incarcerated. Right. But then again, we have to take employment into effect. Right. We also learned again before the pandemic that in over 35 major cities, black males were unemployed between 40 and 50%. Now, what does this mean? It means that whether we're talking about unemployment or whether we're talking about um, post-incarceration, black men find themselves vulnerable in regard to housing and secure housing at that. Even when black males who are coming out of prison have housing vouchers, many of them are, are ignored or turned down. Again, all of that before the pandemic. After the pandemic, very few reports on black males in particular, yet much of the research was focusing on the insecurity of black male life, you know, beforehand. I mean, even if you look at Raj Chetty's work, when you're talking about well-to-do black males coming out of middle-class homes, even upper middle-class homes, they are more likely than even black women, let alone whites, to fall into poverty. So whether you're well-to-do, whether you're poor, or whether you're formally incarcerated, you are economically vulnerable as a black male. 
again, before the pandemic. We don't really know what's happened since because many of the reports have kind of sidelined black males. So when you hear about the she session and the impact this economy has on women, it's because it's measurable. You're seeing women losing jobs. You've even seen reports about how many women have, have quit jobs or left jobs because they had to stay home with kids. With men and black men in particular, it's harder to do because the situation was so bad before the pandemic, it's hard to measure how much worse it may have gotten. And, and it most assuredly had, because it's not like there was any place hiring black males in large numbers during the pandemic to change the situation from what it was beforehand. So economic security goes hand in hand with black male life. And that said, moving past the stereotypical jokes about poor black men who are living off women, let's look at it from another lens, right? Many of these black men are necessarily, or I should say not necessarily, Many of them may actually be hired in a particular way. Now, what do I mean? Well, um, what he talked about, what Ryan talked about was having sex to avoid being homeless, meaning he provided a service, right? For what? Some degree of home security, some degree of having a place to live as opposed to being out on the street, right? In any other context, we would consider that prostitution. And I'm not looking at the legality of it or the morality of it. I'm looking at the degree to which it's necessary for some people as a means of immediate emergency based survival. Now, we can make all kinds of statements about people pulling themselves up, up from their bootstraps and, and getting it together. And all of that sounds great. But the reality is, for many of these men, they've had to find unconventional ways to secure themselves. Now, these these ways that many have found are laughable or dismissible in polite conversation. But I'm trying to look past morality and I'm trying to look past, you know, uh, levity and stereotyping and deflection from having to deal with the reality that undergirds this. If what we're talking about is happening with some black males where they are literally providing sex for a place to live with any other population, it would be looked at as an egregious you know, uh, injustice that needs to be righted. We do not know how to empathize for black men. So what we do is we turn it around and we not only laugh at it, but we also wag our finger at the men who are experiencing it because that's the only way we know how to process it. Now, am I saying that every guy that doesn't have a job, uh, who, who's living with a woman who's paying all the bills that he's a homosexual? No. Am I saying that every man who may fit that definition is inherently doing so because he's manipulative? No. What I'm trying to ask the question about is whether or not homosexuality is something that happens beyond just men being exploitive. Does it come out of, in any context, a necessity? Does it come out of a response to the kind of conditions that black males have been forced to live with very little support? Is it a response in any way to a lack of options and a lack of access? I'm just curious. It's not like I've seen any reports on homosexuality, but maybe we should. Maybe we need to move past laughter, right? And criticism and actually begin to look at whether or not this insecure black lifestyle has anything to do with the real life issues that many black men face. Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, many of these things are, are they tend to run deeper than what we give it credit for what we assume to be true about it. And that, that bothers me. It really does. Because I've known men who back in, in middle school, you know, young men at that, who were either put out of their homes or their homes were insecure. Parents were arrested for committing crimes or parents weren't uh, responsible parents. You know what I mean? And to avoid going into the system, you know, avoiding CPS, some of them couch surfed. We didn't call it homelessness. They just lived at their friends' houses as long as their friends' mothers and fathers would allow them to. They went from couch to couch to couch. And I remember I had a boy who did that. And when he finally stayed at my house for a couple of days, he stole a pair of jeans or a couple of them out of my closet. When it was time for him to go, he bounced, went to someone else's house. And I realized that's how he was living. He was living uh, basically in terms of securing clothes even. He was stealing them from people he was staying with. It was what it was. And in high school, I saw more of it by college. 
a lot of those guys just kind of disappeared for a while, right? You know, many of them had circumstances they grew up with that were just ridiculous. Situations they had where they were beaten by parents, raped by friends of family. There's all kinds of things going on that nobody wanted to talk about. But we had no problem maligning some of these brothers in terms of what they were going through. So what I'm asking is one, is it happening? Two, can you talk about any experience you've had or seen with men who are in this condition and do so in a manner beyond stereotype, beyond dismissal, beyond, um, you know, just uh, framing um, this solely in terms of how, you know, these men are supposedly exploiting people. Can you actually look at it in the context of impoverishment and homelessness? And, he, and address the situations that may have caused it in the people's lives that you, you ran into. Can we actually take this seriously for a moment is my core question. That's really what I want to know. I know we like to use, you know, these kind of tropes like Pookie and Ray Ray and dismiss the humanity and make all kinds of statements about who's worthy of support and who should be dismissed and done away with, even jailed and killed because they simply exist and they don't fit the model for the type of behavior we want to associate ourselves with. But I'm actually asking, can we look past that and actually have a serious conversation about real life conditions that can cause homelessness and insecurity? But instead of being out on a street park bench or sleeping in a car, they managed to sleep on somebody's couch for a while. But let's take it one step further. Are there women that will engage having a sexual partner, uh, having someone spend time with them, have someone to be intimate with, someone to hang out with, someone to be present and do so in exchange for a place to temporarily live? Is it solely manipulative men? Hmm. You know, because the funny part about it is if you reverse the genders, we have no problem talking about exploited men using women for sex. We have no problem with it whatsoever. We have no problem criminalizing the man in a position of authority in, in that he owns the home or rents the home or apartment and is in a position to put people out or allow people in. We have no problem denigrating that man if he if he has a woman come in and in exchange for some type of secure housing housing requires sex. We have no problem condemning that. But when the gender is reversed, the only way we could process it is either as a joke or as a form of exploitation initiated by men. And I'm not saying that either doesn't happen. I'm saying both do, but I'm saying is something else also happening that we don't give any credence to. And there hasn't really been any formal studies in. And I, and I shouldn't say there hasn't. I should say I should just say I haven't run across it yet. I have not heard a discussion about homosexuality, even if they don't use that term. I really haven't heard a discussion that takes this seriously in regard to black men and ask the question, is it happening and to what extent and what are the conditions that produce it? Moving outside of stereotyp stereotypical tropes of men just wanting sex, men just wanting to exploit women and laughing at them as they walk down the street with trash bags of their own stuff while a girl is yelling at him because he slept with someone else, whatever. Let's move past that and actually ask a serious question especially in the midst of a pandemic, especially in the midst of a very cold winter that we're coming out of in Fresno, temperatures gotten pretty low, sometimes any, anywhere from the 30s to the 50s, which at night, and I'm seeing the homelessness levels and they're ridiculous. Can we have, have a serious conversation about this anytime soon? All right, anyway, y'all have a good one. Talk to you soon, peace.